Hi, Dean. Hello. <laughs> so, quick question then is, <laughs> so as you say, you've been competing since 2015. And again, obviously, we know um, ourselves, we know each other quite well, and we've known you since 2015. But where did you come from? What was the sport? And why and how did you get into bodybuilding? Yeah, so that's a good question, actually. Um, so my dad's bought a gym literally around the corner from our house when I was late 13 coming up 14 and um yeah i was just obsessed with training um just yeah literally what at school what i could think about was getting back and going to the gym so um yeah so that was like 13 14 when i started training um and my first comp like i said in 2015 so i was 21 so it took a while for me to get into actually competing. I never set off to aim to compete at all because um, well, I'm, as a person, I'm quite like shy and reserved. So the thought of competing and being on, being on stage proper shit me up like big time. I was like, I'd look at the magazines and see these guys and be like, wow, that is amazing. But I never thought I'd have the bottle to actually do it. And to be fair, I can remember exactly how I felt before I went on stage for the first time. And, to, it never gets any easier like even from the last show when I'm there backstage waiting to go up onto the stage I'm literally bricking it <laughs> so yeah that's um so that's how I got into bodybuilding so it was bodybuilding all along there was never a sport that was the starting point so in a way that's that's quite nice because there's so many people that get into bodybuilding on the back end of another sport or another pursuit. So for somebody to go straight into it and, you know, have that drive and the passion for that, that's quite unusual. Yeah. I mean, I, I did play football um, a bit earlier. I think it was up until I was about 12, but I was shit at football. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It just wasn't wasn't really what I wanted to do for the you know long. So time. that <laughs> that first show, the first show you did, was it a Naba show? Yeah, I mean, it was. Yeah, it was the Naba West in uh, yeah, I'd say 2015. I can remember the day very well. <laughs> yeah, still, um, till now that like winning my first show was will probably be the best feeling. That I will ever have, I should imagine. I don't know. Maybe having kids one day, but <laughs> I don't know. And then, so when was, so 2015 was the NABA show. Then was it the same year or was it uh, the following year that you did the PCA show? PCA um, show was 2016, yeah. That's when I met you guys. Um, that was the Muscle Talk show. Um, yeah. And again, uh, that was another show that I that I you know expected to do and never expected to do that well in. But like I, I didn't really know many other bodybuilders back then. But having a, I like I only just got into like social media when I was twenty one, and I was just having a little look around at the guys that might be competing. Didn't really know many accounts and stuff, so I didn't really have like you know a wide range of people to look through, but. Yeah, I just never, like, obviously I spotted a few guys like you do, and you're just like, oh, shit, you know. Obviously, you were saying, uh, as far as amateurs go, you didn't really know, you know, many, but who were the bodybuilders, you know, when you started to compete? Who were the bodybuilders, whether they were amateur or pros? <clears throat> who were the ones that you looked up to or followed or, you know, admired in some sort of way? Um... Like I say amateurs, I didn't know that many. Um, Stuart Core, you know Stuart? He was yeah yeah. He'd done a guest pose the same same day as I done my first show at the Nabo show. So he was um, immediately someone I looked up to because he was obviously the guest poser there. Um, and as for 
professionals, well, it was just always the guys at the top of the Olympia uh, I was always looking at. But like I say, I didn't, I literally just got into social media. So I, I'd never really looked at anyone out. Like, I'm still not that great at using it now, just to be honest. So I don't, mm-hmm. I've never really, um, I didn't really, no, I didn't really know much about it then, to be quite honest, Mike. Don't, honestly for me listening to this is for you to say that is, is so refreshing because the thing is I think sometimes so many people get caught in social media and other people's expectations of who you should look up to who you should be driven by but just the fact the only person that you've been driven by is yourself and self-motivation to achieve the physique you have. I mean, that's really quite something, especially now for, as you say, people of your age who are driven by social media, who's following who, who's looking up to others. So for you to be just inspired by yourself to keep working and working and working and produ- producing an incredible physique like you are, I mean, that's, that's fucking well done to you. Really well done. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. That's all right. That's ten pound, please. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the, I think the the trouble is, um, a lot of people want to be like somebody else, which in fact you never yeah. will be. Um, you can only be a better version of yourself, of course. So I think I didn't really see the point of chasing someone else's physique when it comes to bodybuilding because it's just not going to happen. For me, um, obviously. At the moment, the guys I look up to in the two twelve division, such as Flex, obviously he's well, he's, he's the god of the two twelve, and um, yeah, it's I mean, even if I got to exactly his size or whatever, I'm, you know, I'm never going to look identical to him. So it's yeah, you've got to play at your own strengths and. Yeah, what um you know you talked about progression and being a better version of yourself <clears throat> but just to give people an idea so what were you what were you weighing roughly because obviously Nava is height classes what were you weighing on that in the, your first show what was i weighing i i i literally have no clue as to what i weighed at my first show at all yeah. um yeah, again that, that's that, that's good the so can uh, you remember uh, your weights of any? I know weights of a few of the shows, um, and the furthest one away being um, the show where you guys were also at was the Romania show in two thousand sixteen, I believe. Was that? Yeah, that was yeah. September two thousand sixteen. That was, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah, and I weighed in. So the, that was a two-day competition, Saturday and Sunday, and I weighed in at seventy-nine point four on the Friday. Um, I didn't really weigh myself up until I, it was only because for some reason we had to weigh in on that one. I can't remember why. I think I can't even. I genuinely can't remember why we had to weigh in. I think it might have been split. The classes might have been split. Um, so it must have been under yeah. two twelve or something. Yeah, I was miles under. <laughs> so, and then for some of your, um, you know, the more recent shows, do you know any of your weights from those? Yes, yes. Um, yeah, that was a lot clearer that time. Um, recent shows, so at the PCA British Finals in 2018, which was the last show I'd won, um, I was 84 kilos. The day before so yeah um, yeah so about yeah 84 kilos and now i am 103 (laughs) oh (laughs) but i really what i was getting at so i mean some of the weights you know as you said 79 in one of your early shows and then 84 when you won the British, so that's only a difference of five kilos. Yeah, but you know, as you say, the looks are different. Um, so it, you know, people do chase the numbers and the weight. Yeah, but from you know, 
from what I can see is that obviously you just you're just improving slowly and you're not chasing those numbers. No, no, I think. Well, this is just a personal opinion on um, the way things are going yeah. at the moment. I mean, there's nothing to say that this is correct. And that's the thing. If ever you've asked, which you have in the past, is asked for critique and what have you, if I've highlighted specific um, body parts that need to be bringing up, you absolutely 100% focus on the area that needs that um, stimulation. And the next time you'll, you'll send a photograph and say, right, how does this look? Yeah. And you can clearly see where you've invested time and effort into improving single body parts, multiple body parts. And so you're just getting better and better every single time I see you. Yeah, I think by doing that, I think, well, personally, I think you keep a cleaner, cleaner physique rather than just be like, right, scrap, I need to bring up a little bit of quad sweep. I, I, need, I just need to get fucking massive. Like, and people are just rushing into, into it. Like, well, personally, I think I'm just a little bit too quick, like too young, and they're blowing their lines, losing shape, and just sort of forgetting about the condition on stage and just going for this full look. Um, yeah, I don't... I don't think that's going to get you the yeah. results that you need. I mean, like, look at the Olymp the 212 results at the Olympia. Kamal was a lot smaller than Derek Lansford and destroyed him. Yeah, and th th that's the thing. As you say, you know, you've always been focused on quality yeah. um, and improving your physique and in the only way you know how. And it's, you're exactly right. You can only improve your physique. So try is you're right. Run your own race. Mm. Get to the head of the fucking queue when you're running and you can't go wrong. Even if you're quite similar to someone else and you're training in the same, your your recovery rate and everything's all going to be different as well because everyone's body's different. Um, yeah, that's, yeah, you can't can't copy yeah. someone else. So yeah, <laughs> talking of no, exactly. But talking of those things, as you said, um, your your body reacts differently to somebody else's. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Obviously, things are a little bit different at the moment because of the lockdown that we're going through. But <clears throat> what's a normal week's training for you? How many days do you train? How long for, etc.? So my normal split at the moment would be chest and shoulders on a Monday. And I would start... With chest one week, start with shoulders the next week, or uh, that will change also on whatever is like pulling ahead. If that makes sense. So if I think shit, like my chest needs to, does need to come up a little bit more, I always put my chest first before the shoulders on that session, and I'll do extra, extra bit of work, extra few sets on the chest. So yeah, chest, shoulders Monday, hamstrings and calves Tuesday. Rest on the Wednesday, back and rear delts on the Thursday, and arms on the Friday, quads on the Saturday. Um, I was doing the normal push pull legs, but that wasn't working for me. You see, I had to. I can't just do legs as a whole. I need to split up. I, I like. I see. I and I don't like. I love training hamstrings, so I can't see. I, I just I want to do like an hour and a half on hamstrings, so doing quads with them isn't going to work. Um, yeah, so I, I, so I put arms back in on a Friday, which is quite a recent um, thing that I've put back in because I stopped training arms for a little bit because of my elbow injuries. Um, those injuries have came have come back, <laughs> which is a bit annoying because um, I'm not hitting them like I'm not doing arms heavy by all means. Like I'm saying, like I'm, I'm doing sort of like 15 kg dumbbell curls and stuff, so I'm not going heavy on the arms. But the elbow injuries have come back, so as soon as this isolation is all out of the way, I'm going to try and get a scan on my elbows. To be fair, yeah. So training really um, is you're trying to work around those uh, issues you've got with your elbows as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's um, been and, around for but, about two years now, actually. It won't seem to budge. 
Yeah, so you, obviously you've got no idea what it is as such. I'm swaying towards there's a small tear now, actually, because the pain is coming between the bicep and the tricep at the bottom of the head above the forearm, and it is, it's not a nice pain, to be quite honest. And it's, it's hurting all the time now. Like it's hurting right now. I'm not doing anything with my arm. So there's something not right there. So I just want to get a scan on it, see if there is any tears or uh, tendon issues. Yeah, obviously, and that that's hindering you on a lot of upper body movements. Um, on certain, it's it's very strange. Like I can do a press and it'd be fine. I do another press and it it kill. So I've just got to take each session as it comes and just work around it every time. Don't, get, don't really get bored, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but sometimes, as you say, it's um, having a, an injury like that can make you think a little bit more about the way you train rather than just get in there and go, you know, balls to the wall all the time. It means you've just got to think outside the box sometimes. Yeah. I mean, you guys have taught me a lot when it comes to isolating muscles. So, um, yeah, it's, it's perfect for. I know you've showed me a lot of ways to get around working the forearms and stuff through using like straps and stuff, which has been brilliant. That's helped me a lot over these last few years. So, yeah, really thankful for that, guys. That's all right. Another tenner, please. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Um, so... You, I mean, you mentioned obviously you're not doing the usual push pull legs that a lot of people do because of obviously then you tend to use a bit more volume in a lot of your training. Would you say? Um. Well, I do sort of three working sets on an exercise usually, unless I'm really really enjoying it, and I mean I'll do six seven sets on an exercise if i'm proper do you know if you, you know when you're proper feeling it and you're like yeah that's where i want it why change the exercise don't get it but an exercise is to hit the muscle you, you're targeting and if, you, if you're proper hitting it why why change up the exercise so quickly just because it's written down on a book you know what i'm saying yeah, I totally agree. But then, so if you do that one exercise and you end up doing more sets of it because it's really working for you that that day, yep. do you re, do you drop out an exercise or do you just end up doing more sets in that particular session? I would probably end up doing more sets over than than taking out an exercise. To be fair, um, depends how I am for time, etc. So obviously having, well, don't not work at the moment because of the isolation, but being at work eight hours and then getting back, getting in the pre-workout meal and all that jazz and getting to the gym can be quite, um, you know, quick push for time. But so I'll, I'll, I'll literally work up until gym shots. So yeah, if I've got time for a few more sets, I'll get them in. Yeah. So, um, then on that note, do you sort of actually log your lifts or do you just keep in the back of your mind, you know what your your sort of strength is on some of your key lifts? Um, just before I got into prep this year, which has now come to an end, so before I was in prep, I was logging. And as I got into prep and I was having less rest, I was just getting pissed off logging my logging my lifts, so I just mm. just was just just chucked it in my gym bag and said, "Well, I can stay there until I finish prep," because I've never done a prep with a logbook. Um, I was just using a logbook in my off season. I don't know if if, if uh, a lot of people would agree with that or whatever, but that's I've never used a logbook anyway. So this was the first year I'd been using a logbook. Um, actually, that's a lie. Um, I did. I was actually logging him when I was about fourteen. <laughs> I remember I was using my maths book. 
I was logging in the back of my mask, but <laughs> yeah. Um, I did alright at maths actually. <laughs> Not too bad. Good. But of course, I think really with the, the logging and things, again, that's down to your own preference. You know, because as you say, when you've got that little bit more time, when you're not rushed or anything else, well, it's great to keep a record. Yeah. But as you say, then if it gets to the point that it becomes, well, not so much just even unnecessary, but it's, it's just no fun in it. You're not and you're focusing more on your training again. Well, that's a good thing as well. Yeah. So I don't think there's a, a for and against on either of that, really. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just. When it comes to prep, I just got to get my head, head down and, and um, get a sweat on. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good. So, right, we're on our way out of shutdown, lockdown. We're not, but just say we okay. are. So your elbow is elbow. You've had your scan, waiting for the results on that. So is there any body part at the moment? All right, as you say, it's a little bit annoying because your arm, your elbow. But is there any body part that you feel you really want to invest in in the next next couple of months yes definitely actually um my upper back to get my lats a little bit wider i say a little bit a lot wider <laughs> um mm. and my leg thickness from the back so whether that's quad sweep um hamstring, yeah. depends obviously however your foot placement is and so on but yeah so that's where i need to it's basically just get thicker from the back um good yeah, I'm relatively pleased with my side shots at the moment. Obviously, they're going to still have to keep progressing as you, as you move up. But, yeah, my, my back shots are my weakest at the moment. So that's where, I need to, that's where I need to invest most of my time. Which, um, yeah, which is a good thing because I enjoy training hamstrings, actually. And I get a really good connection while I'm training them. So, um, yeah, it's just the upper back, I think. Um, yeah. So the lower like, the bottom like, of the back comes out quite thick, which I think is the illusion of my upper back being shit than it. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but of course the thing is though that's what you said, you, you know, you have you've worked so hard on the, the thickness of the lower back then it's just as you say, it's like it's like a knock on effect then. Well if you've improved that, you're gonna have to improve this. Yeah. And that's what bodybuilding's all about. But if you you've said how much you've enjoyed hamstrings, so if you love training hamstring, is there anything you hate to train? Um, I don't hate training anything actually. No, unless you, unless I've got the niggles, which I which that's just down to frustration of the injury. But no, I don't don't hate training anything when everything's all running smoothly. That's all I know. But I mean, um, if I had to say my least favorite body part to train would actually be arms. <laughs> well even with with the elbow working yeah it would still be would still be arms with, with so no injuries on board arms would be my least favorite to train yeah that's quite something because your arms are quite special <laughs> perhaps that's what we should do then we should just make everybody dislike training arms and everybody's arms will grow <laughs> I I used to enjoy them, enjoy enjoy training arms a lot. I mean, just because they're my least favorite, don't mean I don't. Uh, no, I enjoy. Know. But yeah, I used to. Um, I think where they got most of their growth was in my early days of training. To be fair, because I used to hammer the shit out of them, do like twenty uh, ones and all that jazz on them. Like used to literally do like two hours on biceps. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, um, and that worked. To be fair, well, it, it must. It, yeah. It, like I say, my arms developed quicker than everything else, so it must have, um, yeah, it must have. Obviously, with, then you said you were doing um, a lot of 21s, etc., so the reps would probably be higher on, on arms, would you say? They were, yeah. I did a lot of high rep work on arms when I started off. I done, most of my stuff was all, like, weird and wonderful drop sets and high-volume stuff. I mean, I... I can remember I tried out that German volume training, 10 sets of 10 on things. Tried most styles and stuff, especially in my earlier days of training because I was just so eager to like try this, try that. You know what I mean? 
Mm. Yeah, and so is there one style of obviously you you just said you um, have tried lots of different ways of training, etc. Is there one sort of style or method of training that you gravitate towards, or you just like that variety still? Um, I do like the feeling of lifting heavy, especially. Um, you're gonna say, "Well, this is where injuries have come from," but on push movements. But I don't get any niggles whilst doing them when I'm doing them heavy because obviously I'm not going to touch it when I am in pain. But and it'd be no pain afterwards. It'd be like the small little exercises afterwards where I'm like, "Ah, oh, fuck, that hurts." It makes no sense really, but it, I guess that could be from the, the inflammation from doing the heavier sets. But yeah, I I've recently got into like the two three sets heavy and then like a back off set so just be so the heavier sets like six to eight reps and then the back off set sort of 12 to 15 um but then i'd always add in like a couple of drop sets at the end of the session anyway hmm. so rep range is a, a hit through from like six to 15 or 20 up to 20 if i'm doing a drop set i mean so yeah but the thing is, if you can't train the way you enjoy, it's not gonna it's not gonna be any fun anyway. Because if you're not enjoying it, you're not gonna respond to it, you're not gonna get what you want out of it. So if that's the way that suits you at the moment, I mean in three weeks, four weeks, a month, it may be something different. But that's the good thing about this, is the fact you can train, as you said in the beginning, really on how you feel. Yeah, I mean, like you said earlier, so the Training how you enjoy to train is probably one of the most important things when it comes to training because I yeah. say if it's like watching a film that you've you've already watched or if or a film that you just think shit you're just gonna sit there and think well this is shit you're not gonna be motivated to watch it are you I mean that's, no that's right a, bit of a shit example but um, no no but you're right yeah. How many films have you turned off after about two minutes and thought, fuck this shit, i got to go and do something yeah, else? Most of all, Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Netflix is getting a bit of a hammer in these days, isn't it, off most people? <laughs> We've just got Disney Plus, actually, which is all right. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so Netflix and Disney Plus. Yeah. Things are bad. Yeah, I know. It's horrible. I even have to download some PlayStation games. It's terrible, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> so obviously this year, um, or certainly this time, is obviously had to take a, a back seat. So, are you looking for anything at the end of the year, or are you scrapping this year completely and going into next year? Um, as of now, um, fingers crossed, November time. Uh, okay, cool. Okay, so I was five weeks into my prep for the PCA Worlds. And yeah. thus when they're looking to move that show to, which would be a week or, I can't remember, it was a week or two weeks after the British finals is going to be held. Yeah. So where will that be? Have they got any idea? Um, I'm assuming it's going to be in Birmingham. That's the only thing we can take from it, is the fact that this is not specific to any one person. It's not aimed at anyone is everybody so i mean the only good thing is is every one of you that was competing has had to take a back seat but also then it's given you opportunity and i i mean the only way i can look at it is to try and take a positive from it and is giving everybody more opportunities to improve so yeah. yeah that's that's what i have um took on board to be fair and keep telling other people as well so because there's didn't there's no point of uh, I'm open about it and just thinking, oh, this, this year shit, blah, 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 blah. There's no point of thinking like that, is there? Because what's, no. what's happening is happening. You can't change that. So no, I, think, right. I look at the positive from it. So I knew for me what my weak points were, even when I was in when I was coming down in prep, I knew what, which body parts I wanted to be better than they were. So I've just got to work on them. It's just given me a bit more time before I decide to, well, before I step on stage again. So... It's just like this. It's, it's only a positive, really. Obviously, there is a lot of negative things going on in the world. But, yeah, you could go. The bodybuilding can only take a positive from it. And 
just everyone's just got to think, right, let's give me a bit more time to work on this or work on that. And yeah, may it be body parts or posing. Exactly right. Yeah. It could be loads, like, there's, there's loads of people can still be doing at home. Like, there's a lot of people can still be doing at home. Um, if you can't do a vacuum practice on your vacuums, that's something I'm going to be starting to do in the next couple of weeks. Because I've never been able to vacuum, so I want to be able to do that. And I'm not talking about hoovering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but as you say, you don't need a gym for that. No, exactly. No, yeah. Um, posing can be done from from home if you have a mirror or a phone, which I'm sure most people do. So, yeah. I mean, if you've got a coach as well, it's like it's eat it's. Just get on Skype with your coach, posing, bam, you're improving yeah. because posing's a big, big part of this. And without the posing, what is bodybuilding? Mm. If you weightlifting without the posing, <laughs> <laughs> but I think though you're you're sort of sensible to think about aiming for November because I mean, at the moment we don't know what's happening. But I mean, realistically, you know, I think we're going to be in this situation probably till June. And if you think nobody can get to really any decent gyms until that sort of time. So you've got to be looking at the end of the year, really, at the earliest to compete. Yeah. I mean, that's if we're lucky as well. I mean, like I say, if we're in isolation any longer than what you predict, then... Even the end of the year is going to be difficult. I mean, I'm just pretty sure I've seen the Olympia say that's still on, and I'm that's September, isn't it? That one. So um, it's like wow to put a post out yeah, I... to say that's still on is. Um, I mean, God, I do hope everything's all back to normal by then. But you say it's going to be a strange year for competing, yeah. like for bodybuilding. Like, it's going to be crazy this year because. They say things aren't going to be normal to the end of the year, are they? So anyone who's decided to, you know, come out of isolation, get back into prep. I mean, how many people are going to think, you know what, I'll just do next year? Is everyone just going to jump in at the end and this is going to be mental? Or a lot of people are going to think, you know, I'll, I'll do next year. Mm. Yeah, I, th- I totally agree because as you say, and the, the thing is that we don't know at the moment, but I know there's some shows that were on earlier in the year have said they're postponing them till the end of the year. Now, if the lockdown is over in time and all these shows can go on, you're going to have the shows that are being postponed put on later. Then the shows that are already got dates for later, I think, you know, there's going to be shows that are going to suffer somewhere along the line. Yeah, that is. Uh, it's just going to be manic, mate. I think. I think all the shows are going to be sellouts. Um. Well, they like say unless people think I'll go next year, but um, I'm, my guess is it's going to be manic. To be fair, if we say we're back to normal by June, that's when the sort of second half of the season opens up for the amateurs beds around that time I mean, September should be a good competing time as far as I'm concerned realistically the gyms have got to be open by June for people to get in and get past the maintenance and get back into the building yeah. and then get back into the prep stage yeah because it's not going to be um, ideal say like your first day back at the gyms you start a prep is it's going to be a bit, yeah exactly it's going to put yeah. a lot of people off I think because Everyone's gonna. I mean, well, not everyone. Every, everyone's different, obviously. But a lot of people are most likely gonna come out of this feeling a bit shit, you know, like yeah. physique-wise. And you know, if they haven't had, if they don't have a lot of equipment at home, and and you know, you've, you've been missing the gym for months, not yeah. the prep really, are you? Yeah, it's it's going to be a, a test in time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hopefully it all um, smooths over pretty soon yeah exactly yeah so now you've just touched on there 
um, about having a few clients. Now, I mean, I know what you do for a living. If you want to say what you do for a living, but you've touched on clients. So which do you prefer? Working with your clients or working in your day job? Um, I enjoy both, actually. I really do enjoy both. Um, I like working with my clients because I get, I like, I mean, I've had, well, so far, some, you know, they've done really well and um, they're, they're local to me. So I don't really do a lot of online stuff. Yeah. Um, again, pretty terrible with technology. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I like to, I mean, I've got, got a few in the gym I train at and they're, they're lovely people and I really, really enjoy helping them out. So it's really not on the money side of things. And um, yeah, just, I really do enjoy it to be fair. I mean, um, I've got a client, Lee, and um, he was just over the moon with like what package we bought. We've we done the PCA West and the British finals and he was he's you know he's in the late 40s and he's just he's like got into some mental condition i'm telling you and he's like not really been a bodybuilder for a very long time he's just sort of said look i want to compete let's do it and yeah it's just been amazing to be fair good uh, i do really enjoy doing that when it's when you're working with someone that has really got a you know, that mental drive for it. And I mean, it, yeah. it makes a big difference. If you're not, if you've got someone who's like, I mean, they're almost like working with you rather than you just be like, come on, you yeah. need to do this, you need to do that. If you've got clients that are working with you and I mean, I mean, you know, working, it's, it works a lot well. It works a lot better. Sorry. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And just seeing someone achieve what they want to achieve and, and something they believe they never would achieve is amazing i mean mm. to them it's a massive massive achievement which you know what i mean so um yeah but yeah i do enjoy my uh day job as well which is uh plumbing i do, do enjoy that <laughs> good yeah it gets the calories have you <laughs> yeah exactly but when um have you been in a situation where you've been prepping people and prepping yourself yeah um that was happening up until this isolation so i was i was prepping a few people i mean i got like five or six clients so literally not a lot at all but they're all close to me so um and yeah so different things i mean i've got I've got ray she's in her 50s she's natural and she's done extremely well um yeah I mean it's I didn't really get that deep into prep I mean I was five or six weeks into prep and that didn't really make a difference towards the energy I had towards my clients um, it did worry me because they obviously when I started prep continued, continued prepping them and off season for a few other guys and it was a worry that I thought, shit, what if I don't have the energy or anything for him? And I just want to be like, look, fuck off. Like, I thought that is, that can't happen. So um, it didn't get nowhere near, near, no, not even close to that point. So it's all good so far. <laughs> I don't know um, how other people manage. I'm sure they manage really well. But yeah, so far it's all good. I think as well, sometimes if you are working with people and you're prepping at the same time, sometimes it takes you away or out of that um, almost isolation, self-isolation in prep because you've got to be able to, um, you know, converse with them. You've got to be able to guide them. So sometimes it can be a positive because it'll take a little bit of your um, and not you, but just when you're competing and you're prepping yourself, it's a little bit of isolation and self self absorption. It takes some of that away. So if anything, sometimes you do it right, it can make your own prep a little bit easier. Yeah, um, I totally agree with that. Actually, I totally agree with that because 
well, one of my main things coming into this prep that I, well, obviously now come to an end, but for now, one of the main things for me was to make sure that I dealt with the prep a lot better uh, mentally. Yeah. Uh, mainly for everyone around me. <laughs> um, not that I was ever yeah. bad, not like a serial killer or anything, you know what I'm saying? Not yet. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was one of the main things for me anyway, it was to was the mental side of it to be, to be able to get better at that get better at dealing yeah with the prep so it, yeah i had uh, and I mean, mental goals as well as physical goals and it was working actually if you um yeah which maybe prepping other people was to do with that and that helped a lot hmm. because of course i think as well Sometimes, and, and I mean, obviously, you know, I, I work with a few clients and try to make, if I can make them as relaxed as possible, their prep is better. But also, as you say, how it affects them mentally towards their family, their friends, their jobs and everything else. So, and as you say, the calmer and more relaxed anybody is through prep, the easier prep is. Yeah, definitely. It's all about keeping your chills. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nobody likes an angry person. <laughs> no, including yourself. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's not good if you uh, even think, "Fuck me, I'm a prick." <laughs> well, if you think it, yeah, that usually yeah. means you are. Then yeah, exactly. <laughs> Obviously, you weren't in sort of depths of. Uh, prep this time but previously obviously maybe you weren't um prepping other people but how did it affect say the plumbing job you know when you were two three four weeks out from a show um energy levels get very low <laughs> um i'm sure you you all know um when you get to the point where you you feel you feel like uh, some fuckers build your shoes up with concrete, you know, and um, <laughs> yeah, you're like shit. Why are my legs getting heavier and heavier and heavier? Mm -hmm. Oh, but then your head's telling you that it looks smaller. Oh, but why are they so heavy if they look so small? Oh, yeah, mental battles. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the 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 work side of it does struggle regards of energy, definitely. Um, because, like I say, when you're three or two weeks out, two or three weeks out, you're going, you're going hard, aren't you? So, energy levels are they're just not there, and yeah, moving. On. Luckily, I, I work with my dad, and he, he understands bodybuilding completely, so it makes it a lot easier. Like if I was working with a company with a few other blokes and that, and they didn't really get it, and you're you're absolutely fucked, so then probably, yeah, probably get more issues that way. So I'm um, very fortunate to um, be working with him and he understands very well. So that makes it a lot easier when it comes to the deep parts of prep. Uh, a, a lot easier when it comes to all of it, really, because so in the off-season, I take a lot a lot longer to eat my food. So that helps. If it was like working with other people, well, I'm sure I would do their head in as much as they would do my head in. So, yeah. Got a good yeah. team. Got a little little team going on. It works well. Yeah, but you're right, mind. As you say, the thing is, um, a lot of people don't, not so much understand. They do understand because they haven't got that. But a lot of the times when um, they see somebody doing well, oh, it's because they're lucky they got this. They're lucky they got that. And sometimes, as you say, it's not necessarily financial luck or otherwise but is having the support team around you because obviously with dad and Rachel and everybody else that absolutely gets what it's about. Oh, yeah. And to have that around you is just, that's where the true luck is to have that support. Oh yeah. That's, that's priceless. Uh, that support is um, to, to my mind, a lot more valuable than a financial, you know I mean, being like mentally wealthy because yeah, like I say, it's, it's Massively different, yeah. Yeah, having the support around yeah. you that you need is, yeah, it's a lot a lot better than the financial support because, yeah, like you say you can't do it 
well, it's, it's not, I know it's not exactly a team sport, but it kind of is at the same time. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because you say without that support mechanism and that team around you, you would never get, and that's anybody, you know, just even grief from parents. That, you know, what are you doing that for again? <laughs> you know, in that sort of attitude. Oh, that's enough now. So to have that, and as you say, for dad to be quite happy for you, him to carry on while you sit there for three hours eating your food, that's pretty good going. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it works well. So, um, so you still got to get the work done, but yeah, we make sure we, uh, it's all done. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, good. I do, we do work well together in that respect. Definitely. So, right, I just want to change tack slightly. Well, <laughs> completely. Just, yeah, completely. Um, <clears throat> in a couple of, a few conversations we've had with ourselves and others, you know, there, there seems to be a lot of talk um, in bodybuilding uh, these days of between sort of the, the 90s and now saying, oh, the guys – you know, in the 90s, you know, trained harder, had more work ethic, etc. What's your take on it? Um, well, first off, most of the, um, the pros from the 90s were incredible. So hats off to them straight away. <laughs> because mm. all the images we see of those guys, it's pretty crazy. Um, yeah. Um there are still the guys out there that put the graft in like that. Um, when you hear stories of actually some of these guys were a little bit lazy, etc. I don't know. Um, I don't know many of these guys personally. Um, I do know a few that were on the amateur, like a good amateur level that were competing in the 90s and their work ethic was insane. Um, perhaps a little bit too crazy. Um, you probably get where I'm going with that. <laughs> hmm. Um, but no, I, I do. People, there are. There are I guess there is with ever, with any sort of error. There are the lazy guys that are everything, and then there are the guys that will and girls, sorry, will keep. Pushing, do you know what I mean? So you got. So I, I know plenty of people at the moment in this generation that do graft, and I mean graft. Um, but yeah, I don't don't really know many of the pros from the nineties personally, so I can't touch on that too much. Obviously, um, but I think everyone everyone looks at their own era. Obviously, with fondness, you know, when in 20 years time, you might be saying, oh, well, you know, in in 2020, we worked harder than the guys these days. You know, everyone sort of looks at their own era as the best, you know, but yeah, the, old, we, the older generation will um, give the nowadays generation a dig, especially because of the whole social media thing is a lot different. I think that's a big chunk of that. Um, because if that was back like back then, if the social media was around, they would have got more a lot more recognition and done better with their like fitness related businesses, etc. So um, maybe they wouldn't have such a hump on uh, the nowadays generation. But fuck me, there are some snowflakes mine nowadays. So um, yeah. Um, kind of 50 50 on that one yeah i think you're right yeah that as, as you i'll use your words you, you said there's some snowflakes uh these days but there were then as well yeah yeah i'm sure there was yeah, yeah. Like, like i say there's from every generation there's gonna be the grafters and, and i think that's built into you not it's not something you can choose to be like, like all of a sudden from being a lazy shit thing, right? Tomorrow I'm gonna be a fucking Trojan. Like that's just 
I think it's in your DNA if you're going to be a grafter or not. Do you know what I mean? And it comes down to anything in life, not just bodybuilding. Yeah, exactly. So how long, you know, uh, how long have you been working with your father, as an example? Since I left school, so I was 15, 16. So exactly. Yeah. So you've had to graft and work for a living. Yeah. So surely you take that uh, ethic into the gym with you, with you as well. Oh, for sure. Yeah. 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 The, I think it's like the same thing with anyone when it comes to um, learning from bodybuilding. It is, it is a thing. If you've gone through a prep and you've really, really suffered, I think you can put that into different aspects of your life. A lot of people have said before, um, so it does help with anything else because you think, well, you look at the amount of effort you put into one prep alone, just one prep. How much effort? I don't, I don't know how you can like scale up and weigh and the amount of effort. Like, but if you put that into something else, you're gonna do well at it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you because I went. You know, just from my own experience, I went back to university as a mature student and did my sports science degree. Um, and I used the same mindset of that as I would when I was prepping for a show. There was people far more intelligent, I thought they were, than myself on my course. But I came out, you know, with a really good degree because I just applied myself in exactly the same way as if I, I was doing a show. Yeah, that makes perfect sense, mate. I mean, that's amazing to hear as well. I mean, I mean like, I'm sure it, it goes for you guys in your gym. Like, how many people would have rolled over by now? Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, you are just... The, the effort and the passion you have is just... There's no way it's going to fail. It won't. It won't fail. Never will fail. Not as long as that passion and drive is still there, it will not fail. And that's... I mean, you can't, you can't buy that. And you, I mean, you can't just go and find that somewhere. <laughs> no, but you're right, mate. In as far as really, as you say, that passion and drive and work ethic, as you say, is what's going to make you better than the version of yourself that you say is all you can do is to keep improving and improving. And it's the drive and passion that makes you do that. And, um, you know, and as I said, the thing is, you're exactly right. You can't buy that. And if you don't have it, that is the recipe for failure. Yeah, certainly. Good. So we're coming up to the end of the hour for the recording, but um, hopefully, you know, whenever this um, lockdown ends and you can get back on your prep, I'm sure I know myself and Lisa, and I'm sure there's a lot of other people that are looking forward to seeing the version of yourself that you yeah. bring next to the stage. Oh, <laughs> I am touched. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, um, it's going to be different than the last, than the last package, to be fair. Yeah. It's going to be a lot different. And, I mean, I'm aiming it to be uh, right around four to five kilos heavier on stage. That's sweet. I'm trying to push the numbers either. Um, because that's where I believe things go wrong. So uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was eighty four last time I competed in good condition. I was a little bit more at the the comp a few weeks after, but I was rebounded slightly. So I say eighty four. I'd yeah. be happy to be around eighty eight. Eighty eight would be a good <laughs> good number. So um. I don't yeah. know what it is in pounds for anyone who works in pounds. But yeah, <laughs> that's the aim. Good man. Should be a lot different. Good. I look forward to that, truly. Yeah, and hopefully once this is all over, you know, we we can get together and uh, have a couple of sessions as well soon. 100%, mate. 100%. We will be, both me and Rachel will be down straight away. I can guarantee you that. Good man. It's been a brilliant hour, and um, you know we're looking forward to seeing you both again soon. Thank you, guys.
Okay, thank you so much for doing it, Lev. See you soon. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye.